Hey guys, welcome back. Modi101 here, and we are back in Euro Truck Simulator 2. And, uh, yeah, I think in the game we're kind of stuck because I don't know how to get the boat to go, but we'll figure this out. So, um, so I had, a, I had a couple people give me some ideas on a story to tell. Now, before I start this, some, you guys all have to understand. I like having just an ending and then seeing what I come up with because I'll be honest with you, I'm just as surprised as the rest of you. I know four seconds before you do. So this one I had to do a little bit of research on a word for a story, but we'll figure that out. So uh, let's get to this. Let's uh, let's hop in. And like I said, I we have these tractors and we're supposed to be going on a boat, but remember the last episode, we couldn't get the boat to go. So I think we're going to end up fighting with this while I tell you a story, so. Alright, I, I, I kind of want to back up. Can I get out of this boat? Well, can I back up just straight? Alright, do I just put the front of the truck in here? Hold on, we'll, we'll start the story here in a second. Oh, there we go, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> um... All right, uh, there and embark. Okay, we're on a boat. Yay, we made the boat go. <coughs> All right, so like the rest of these stories, I'm going to give you the ending first and then uh, tell you how we got there. So, and this isn't really the ending. This will kind of be the middle, I believe, the way I think I'm going to inform you guys of this. So uh, this is the time that I got lost in Germany and I only had a spoon. Okay. This is, this is going to be an interest. Did they literally let us off in the same place we're already at? Um, oh crap! I don't know which is the right road side of the road. I don't know what country we're in. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Anyways, all right. So uh, back in the uh, uh, the early '80s, I, I literally don't know which. Okay, that side. Are we on the normal sides? We're on the normal sides now. Okay. Um, back in the early 80s, I, uh, like many times, I've, I've, had, I've had a slew of jobs. Uh, and for the purpose of this series, a lot of them are made up. Anyways, so uh, for a short while, and I want to say this was like 86, so I was, you know, probably about 55 years old. Um, I was a massage therapist for the band the Eagles okay so the band you know the band uh, Hotel California and other Eagly songs I was I was a a touring massage therapist now I'm gonna be dead honest with you I didn't know how to do it but the funny part is they didn't know what they wanted so pretty much I would just kind of like drop elbows on them after a show and they would just go oh yeah right there and I don't know what that meant but I did it and I made money right um, I got to visit a service station? My engine went wonky. Uh-oh. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we got to stop at a service station. Anyways, so I'm on tour. They're doing a European tour. They're all, I've, I've been to this area before. I wasn't a truck driver. but um, And uh, now, now here's the thing. Now, you would think, oh, you're touring with this giant band. Glamour. No. No. They had a big bus. They had all the amenities all the accoutrements and whatnot. But meanwhile, I was driving like a 1972 Pinto behind the bus. So not only am I uncomfortable and just the, the, the fumes of the bus just blowing into my face constantly, but I just have to realize that after every show, I, I, gotta, I gotta touch the Eagles. That's my job. I won't tell you how I got this job. It was a it was a bet with a, a guy I knew. So, anyways, um, yeah. So, uh, no way over here. Yeah. So I, I anyway. So we're we're traveling to the European tour, right? Now I wasn't the head massage therapist. I was an assistant to the assistant massage therapist, right? And so uh, we're going. That's why I had to ride in the Pinto because I was like. I was like the understudy of the understudy of the rubbing of the eagles, if that makes sense, right? Um, and by the way, they don't like it when you call them the eagles. That didn't go over well. That it happened a lot, but they didn't like it. Anyways, so um, I'm in the Pinto. I'm going, right? 
Uh, we're in Germany. They played a show the night before. Apparently, the Germans love the Eagles back in the the I did it again. The Eagles back in the uh, in the eighties. Is, is that what I said? The eighties. Yeah. Anyways, and uh, so we're going, you know, and we're we're heading off to the next show. Now the bad pub, they won't tell me where the next show is. They think it's funny. They're they're the Eagles. They're comedic geniuses. They don't tell me. I stopped at the goddamn light. Okay, I actually can't see the light, so let's back up a little bit. Is it green yet? Okay, that makes sense. Anyways, so the uh, we go, and they think it's funny to not tell me. I just got to find the bus, but it's really not that big of a deal because it's a giant tour bus, right? I mean, it doesn't have their name on it. Oh, uh, I just ran into something there. Um, it doesn't have their name on it or anything like that, but, you know, you, you can tell. There's not a lot of them, right? Turns out this very... Stop running into the bar. This very weekend in Germany, apparently all of the like the tour bus aficionados are there for some sort of conference, right? <coughs> and uh, so I'm going, and next thing I know, there's like 15 buses in front of me that all look like the same bus. And of course the Pinto won't start because that was kind of, they called it a feature. It wasn't a feature. It just sucked. But anyways, so I go and I'm like, ah, that's got to be them. That, that's, that, I've seen the back of this bus all across Europe. And the thing is they flew the Pinto over from the U.S., which seemed, oh, I'm coming in hot. All right, there we go. And enter and lazy. All right. Anyways, so I'm, I'm following them. And now my boss... Uh, his name was Mike, my, Mike uh, Lufel, L-O-F-F-E-L, right? And uh, now, of course, he, he gets to be on the bus because he's important and he was trained and other, and his name's Mike, you know, it's a bunch of crap. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So I, uh, I it turns out that wasn't my, my tour bus. That was a, that was a. It was a, a polka group because apparently there's like 30 people in a polka group. That was a different group, and apparently, the polka people, not a fan of massage therapists, so they they very much let me know that. And to be honest with you, a little rude. They were a little rude about it. So, anywho, so um, I pull over now. Mind you, this is the 80s. There is no cell phones. They're on a tour bus. There's no phone on the bus. I ain't got a CB radio to try and get a hold of them. So I'm stuck. Now, I don't speak a word of German. I barely speak English at this point. Would you get in the spot? Anyways, so I'm going around, and I'm now I remember that the other massage therapist, my boss, he was the only, I didn't know any of the name of the bands, the guys in the band, Don Henley. Was he in the Eagles? Anyways. Um... I remember him saying that he had family in 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 Germany, and uh, so I thought, well, maybe if I asked around, they might know the family, and that might help me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm walking around, and I'm just walking up to people, and I'm saying, "Lufel, Lufel," and I'm getting these looks. Lufel, getting these looks. Lufel. And this lady walks up, and she's saying something to her. She's angry. I don't know what she's mad. Maybe she might not have been angry. It's a very angry language. Anyways, and she just hands me a spoon and throws her hands up in there and walks away. I was like, well, that's weird. Maybe, I don't know if it's a custom. Is this a German thing? I don't know, right? So I'm walking down the street. I'm like, and I'm just, at this point, I'm not even asking. I'm just, Lufel, Lufel. And next thing you know, spoon comes flying out of the window. I'm another play. I've got two spoons. I don't know. Do I keep them, or is this is this the currency? Does, does Germany work on some sort of like spoon bartering system? I don't know about. Walking down the street, loofel, loofel, spoon, spoon, loofel, spoon. Every time I say the damn word, someone throws a spoon at me. <laughs> and next thing you know, I've got a, I've got a handful of spoons. I don't know where the hell I am, but I got these spoons. And uh, turns out, unbeknownst to me, loofel in German, spoon. I was walking down the street just screaming, spoon, 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 and they wanted me to shut up, so they threw me a spoon, right? Let's pick up another job. So I'm now, at this point, I'm lost in Germany, and all I've got is these spoons, right? Um, I don't want to go back over there. Let's, 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 
You know, maybe let's go to, you know, let's go to Germany. I mean, that's, that's where the story is. So, <coughs> Anyways, so I've got like 80, 90 spoons. So, and I don't want to carry them around anymore, but once again, I don't want to be rude. And this guy comes up to me, and he, and he spoke a little uh, English, and he says, excuse me, sir, that's a lovely set of spoons. And I'm like, well, thank you. I didn't, you know, I didn't really know that was a compliment I was looking for, but it is. By the way, if you're ever out and about, and you see somebody, just tell them, you know what? You've got a lovely set of spoons. It'll be so confusing, but it'll still make them feel good. So, throw that out there. Anyways, watch out for the sign. Clipped it. Okay. So, now... I've got all these spoons, and I've got this gentleman who is very, very enthralled by my, my spoon collection. And he goes, you know, excuse me, sir, would you want to get rid of those spoons? And uh, I'm like, all right, okay, that's fine. You know, I mean, I'm not, like, attached to them. And he goes, unfortunately, I don't have any money. Because I was like, I could get money, maybe buy a plane ticket, fly back home. You know, and, and he's like, I don't have any money, but, but, I, well, that light was green the whole time, wasn't it? Yeah, whatever. I've sat through green lights in real life. Heather can attest to that. Anyways, so he's like, but I have, I have this, this collection of hats. And I'm like, well, okay. They were nice hats. Don't get me wrong. But I'm thinking, I'm so, by the way, I don't know where the hell the Pinto is at this point, let alone the Eagles. I don't know where the Pinto is. So he's like, well, how about these, you know, how about these hats? And I'm thinking, okay, well, the spoons are kind of heavy, but the hats are kind of awkward. So I'm kind of like screwed either way. But this guy was so nice that I, I was, okay, fine. He's like, I really wanted the spoons. So I give him the spoons. He gives me, it was like nine hats. It was like nine hats. And I'm like, great. So now I'm walking around the city. I've, I've got this pile of hats. I'm wearing two of them, but I'm carrying the rest because I don't want to be weird. You know what I mean? And so... Uh, so I'm walking around, and then another lady comes up. This lady comes up this time, and she goes, what a lovely set of hats you have. Uh, that light was yellow. Oh, I got to turn. I got to turn. Oh, I ran into X's. Um, and I'm like, well, thank you. And she goes, well, is there any way you'd want to give up those hats? And I'm thinking, okay, she looks like she's got money, right? And I'm trying to, try to get some money to get out of Germany because I'm lost, and all I've got are these hats. So I, I'm like, sure. And she goes, unfortunately, I don't have any money with me. And I'm like, oh, okay, here we go. He went, what's, am I going to get spoons again? Did I just do some weird round robin spoon hat thing? And she goes, what I do have, I'm going to give you, is I have this albino monkey. And I'm like, you shut up, lady. She goes, no, I have one. I have an albino monkey. And she goes, I will trade this albino monkey his name is Nick, Nicholas, you know, when he's dressed up nice. I'll trade you this albino monkey for those hats. And I'm like, well, I mean, a monkey's fun. And maybe a monkey, maybe the monkey can do a little dance. Maybe that'll help me get some money to be able to get home. And plus, I'm tired of wearing these, these hats around and carrying these hats around. And she seemed to want them. So I hear the thing, boom, out of nowhere. Don't know where it came from. Lady's got a monkey, albino monkey. White as the driven snow, red eyes, very terrifying. His name's Nick, or Nicholas, if you're nasty. Anyway, so, <coughs> I got this monkey. He jumps up on my shoulder. He's a good time monkey. Love him. Best friend, right? We still write. We don't see each other as much as we used to. He's like a college friend. Anyways. So, yeah, there we go. Now, I'm in Germany. I'm lost. Still don't know where the... I was hoping maybe the monkey could find the Pinto. Nope, not at all. The monkey's very unfamiliar with 1970s cars in the 80s. Not, not like now. They know them all now, but not but back then. It was a very different time. So I'm thinking, okay, you know. So I'm, I'm, I'm negotiating with the monkey. Like, can you dig? Can you sing? Can you dance? Do you, do you do any tricks? And he, and he really doesn't. He just hangs out. So I hang out with the monkey. It's getting late now. So me and him. Apparently in Germany they have these hostels that you can only get in when you have a monkey. So I was like, okay, that's convenient. So we stayed there. It was adorable. I got a bed. He got a little bed up. It was like a bunk bed, but his was really little. It was adorable. So, me and Nick, the monkey, sleeping, right? We wake up the next day. We go out. And as we're walking out, a, 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 a really nice, I want to say it was like a Rolls Royce comes rolling by, right? And all of a sudden, slams on the brakes. Slams on the brakes. Backs up. And window rolls down. 
and it's like a, like a nine-year-old little girl, like real nicely dressed, um, British accent, not from the area, right? And I just hear this little girl start squealing. Oh my God, daddy, daddy, I want that monkey. And I'm like, well, first of all, his name's Nick. Don't be rude. I mean, you, you, you're dressed nicely. You're allowed to call him Nicholas. But second of all, he's my monkey. <laughs> Other car door opens. Very distinguished gentleman. Salt and pepper hair. Little mustache, but not in a creepy way. Gets out very finely dressed. Comes up to me and he says, hello, good sir. I'm not doing an accent. That would be me. Hello, good sir. My daughter is very infatuated with your monkey. I think he called him a chimp, which offended me and Nick. But we let it go because we're adults. Um, how much would you like for the monkey and I'm thinking okay what's the rich guy gonna give me you know because apparently nobody in Germany carries cash they just uh, hats and monkeys that's that's how they that's all their current spoons that's all their currency and I and, and he goes how much would it take I'm like well how much would you offer I like them to set the bar and then I like to negotiate he goes well I don't have any cash on me and I'm like Jesus loving Christ he goes but I have this Rolls Royce. I don't know anything about Rolls Royces, but he he made it he made it sound like it was really important, right? Got this he had like gold and stuff on it, and like uh, I don't know, like a fin. I don't know. And he goes, "We're right by our uh, our our German vacation penthouse. You let my daughter have the monkey. You can have this Rolls Royce, and my driver, who's also named Nicholas. Yeah, I know, right?" And I'm thinking, okay, well, now you're telling me you're going to let me own a purse. He's like, no, 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 he would work for you, but I'll pay him. And I'm like, okay, that makes me feel better because I don't know if there's hostels that you could stay at when it's you and your driver because he wouldn't fit in that little, that little bed that Nick slept in. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So me and I had to sit down with Nicholas and be like, okay, and then we spent the day together and we become really – and he ran off to that little girl. Nicholas the monkey was a jerk. He just ditched me. Like, I don't even think I got halfway through the sentence and he was gone. Boom. And I'm like, fine, go. We'll see who misses who first. Still cuts me deep. I miss him so much. I don't even think he remembers me. Anyways, so I get in the car, Rolls Royce, Nicholas. Now, me not thinking, I'm driving around. I'm thinking, let's find the Pinto. Then I realize, screw the Pinto, screw the Eagles. I've got uh, Nicholas in his, in his car. He can he take me somewhere. So we're driving around, and then I notice... In the front of the Rolls Royce, they had a CB. They had a CB, right? And I, uh, I say, hey, can I see that CB? And Nicholas says, sure, because he has to. And so, yeah, I get on the CB, and I'm like, breaker, breaker, one, nine. This is uh, Fuzzy Elbows calling uh, Eagle Nest One. Breaker, over. I did that. I didn't have to make the sound, but I enjoy that. That's for me. That's not for them. And then all of a sudden, I, I hear it come back. This is the Eagle's Nest. This is, uh, hey, hey, how you doing, Fuzzy Elbows? And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I didn't notice you on my six. Where, 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 where are you at in the old, uh, the old Pinto Bean? And, I'm, and I explained the whole situation. I didn't get into the hats and spoons, but I explained the situation. And he tells me right where they are. And I'm like, Nicholas, go there. So, we start heading down. We're heading down the road. And, and at this point, most of the other uh, buses have moved on. And there it is. There's the Eggles bus, right? And uh, the old Rolls Royce uh, pulls up behind him, flashes the lights, toots the horn, the Rolls Royce horn. Nothing. And then I notice Nicholas picks up the, the CB. Now, I'm sitting back. I'm ha you know, I have a drink. Um, I'm missing my monkey. So there's a lot of things going on in my end of the car. And so I didn't really hear what he said, but all of a sudden, you know, he's saying something. And then, boom, like like a magic trick, that bus pulls right over. <coughs> and then all of a sudden, the bus empties out. All of the Eggles, all of their people, all of their people's people. Remember, I was people's people's people, so I, I wasn't one of them. And they come out, and they're, they open the Rolls Royce, and they're, I'm so sorry. You know, Modi, we can't believe... They weren't even calling me Fuzzy Elbows, which was the first time. And um, I had a glandular thing back then. Oh, got to get off here. 
Uh, I had a glandular thing. I had fuzzy eels. But that's, that's not neither not here nor there. Anyways, so yeah. And they're, they're super apologetic. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hey, why don't you come on the bus with us? And I'm like, all right, let's go. So we get on the bus, and, and they're, they're cleaning off seats, and they're putting down, hey, you want a snack? Snack? Do you, you ever had bugles? And I hadn't at this point. And they were like witch fingers. I was like, that's going to be a thing. Anyways, so I sit down, and I'm, I'm eating snacks, and they're giving me drinks, and we're hanging out. And they, they told me what Hotel California was really about. You wouldn't believe it. I can't tell you. Sign an NDA, but you would not believe it. It's about Dolly Parton. Anyways, um... And yeah, so, and, and they, you know, we, we finished the tour, they, they gave me a raise, they do all this stuff, they, they're, and I was like, wow, like, I know they were like hazing me, but maybe I'm in with the group, maybe losing the Pinto is like some sort of legacy for the Eagles. Turns out, the gentleman with his daughter in the Rolls Royce was actually the owner of the record label the Eagles were on at the time. Geffen, Warner, doesn't matter what it is. It's not a true story. Anyways, and because uh, I kind of told him my story, you know, without the spoons and the hats and whatnot. And apparently he had made some calls and threatened to drop the Eagles from their record label if they did not treat the nice monkey man, which I didn't like that nickname, nicer. I was the man with the monkey. I wasn't a monkey man. Anyways, so apparently when we found him, they had to be nice to me the whole rest of the trip. So we went on the rest of the tour. We were kind of near the end. We fly back home. Everybody's super nice to me because they kind of have to be, and I'm okay with that. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I get home, unpack the bags. Can't believe the craziness I was in. And as I am unpacking my bags, I, I had a, a coat and I reach into the coat pocket, and lo and behold, there's a spoon. Just one spoon. I don't remember putting any spoons in my pocket, because I was carrying the other ones around in my hand. I got one single spoon. And on that spoon is a little note. A little note written what it looked like by a little child. Just really like backwards R's and really wiggly lines and right now. I'm thinking, who, who stuck a spoon note in my pocket? I open up the note, and it says... I will never forget the day we spent together. Your monkey buddy, Nick. Yeah. He remembered. He remembered. All right, guys. Well, there we go. We're in the middle of a trip, but we're going to have to pull over on the side of the road because we are out of time. That would be uh, the, the story of uh, how I was lost in Germany. Nothing but a spoon. And, uh, yeah, so... Uh, Make sure you hit that like button. Any questions, comments, concerns, put it down in the comments section. Uh, if you have uh, other stories you want to hear me tell, you remember you just give me like a one sentence thing, kind of a place in a situation type of situation, and then uh, put it down in the comments because uh, I'm going to try and use those as much as possible. I don't even care about this driving game anymore. I just like telling these stories. This gives me something for you to watch and me to do. You don't even have to watch these videos. Just listen to them. This is the laziest podcast on the planet. So, all right, guys, if you liked it, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Questions, comments, concerns, put it down in the comments section. Um, if you guys, it's the beginning of July. It's early July. So if you guys want to have some fun and hang out and have a blast, you guys should become a Patreon. Uh, not only do you get access to five different Minecraft servers that, uh, that the squad is all a part of, but you also get access to our Discord. Get to hang out with everybody in the squad, chit chat with us, meet all the patrons, have a fun place to play some games, have a good time. Go check out the Patreon link in the description just to check it out, see if it's something you like. You know, you might be interested in. And uh, also, if you guys want to get your own server for a slew of different games, go check out Host Havoc using the link down below. Just go over there and browse, see what kind of. Oh, this is a stop. Okay, uh, see what you know. What oh, I'm in Berlin. This is where it happened. That's where I got the monkey. Anyways, go check out Host Havoc. See what they offer. See what they can do for you. And, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, you'll like it. If you get anything, you know, go ahead and tweet it out to me. So, as you can see on our map, we are just about at the end. So, I'm actually going to finish up this route. And then we'll pick up with a new route next time. So, till the next episode, I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.